Yeah. There we go. Hi, we are both dance classes. I am Beatrice Ghezzi. And I'm Oli Quick. This collection of interviews is part of our Teachers Rehab 22 project, funded by the Arts Council of England. We've interviewed a selection of dance practitioners who've made an impactive contribution to education and learning over a period of time. They come from different dance disciplines and they work in different contexts. And we hope you find their words as inspiring as we have. Rosie and Beverly from Iowa Dance Theatre. Temujin and Sunanda from Grounded Movement. Hakim from Impact Dance. And Erica from the University of Wolverhampton. I'm Beverly Glee. Um, I am the artistic director and founder of Irie Dance Theatre. And I'm Rosie Lehan, I'm the director of accredited training at Irie Dance Theatre. Well, I um, just started off studying ballet because I'm from a small town, Margate, so the only option really was to go to a studio and do ballet and modern kind of ISTD and then when I was about 15 I got into contemporary dance mainly through seeing performances on TV um, and then I ended up going to the Laban Centre and I met Beverly at the Laban Centre. I, I got into dance at school actually, um, I think I sort of came from that community of young people. My teacher was trained at Laban and so and we had at school we had dance, um, dance groups, which was set up by, by my teacher. And we, and we sort of participated in that. I, I took to it quite naturally. Um, and we, that was at a time when we had, I don't know if you guys remember the ILEA, which is the, in the London the Education Authority. Authority. Mm. And, and they had a, a section at Baker Street, which was a focus on, on dance in education. And they really created a fantastic platform for dance in London and across the country, which meant that young people who really didn't have an opportunity to dance formally were able to, to experience that at school. So I was kind of part of that group and we had our, our dance group at school and we used to compete with other schools. <laughs> Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I really, it, it was something I, I believe I took to really actually. So I, so I was asked quite often to lead the classes, um, which, was, which was great. And then I ended up teaching, teaching dance at my local youth centre. So it was all very organic. There was, I mean, I, I, I just knew I loved what I was doing. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just knew I loved what I was doing and that people would follow me. So, yeah, so that's, that's, my, um, that's my whole introduction mm. to dance. And then you two obviously started to collaborate. Yes. Yeah, so Beverly was a year above me at um, Laban, and then very soon afterwards we started working on things like play schemes. So Beverly was based at the Albany, and we used to run, do dance for play schemes from that, and then it built up from there. Then I started working at City and Islington College, mm -hmm. Beverly started Irie, and Irie were a constant presence at City and Islington, so it kind of like snowballed from then. Mm -hmm. Yes, Irie's been uh, based at Moonshot since 2007 and I've worked with Irie for quite a few years. Yes, this is our, our home, we call it our home. Um, the space was originally a community centre. Actually, I say originally, but it still is. There is still a focus around it being a resource for the community as much as it is for us as a dance theatre company. Um, yeah, and we... and it's. Because we're in the heart of the community, actually, so it's, um, it's a very special place to be coming to work. We're, we are situated in um, South East London, um, the borough of Lewisham, and we are in New Cross. Um, the, the building, the Moonshot Centre, actually has um, quite a lot of sort of historical relevance to the area that, that we're in. 
um, in in 1981, the, um, the Black People's Day of Action happened from this park, um, and that took place because of the dreadful um, incident of a fire that happened. It's called the New Cross Fire, um, and so that this building was the place where victims of the fire came along to have their first meeting when they felt that the um, the police weren't taking the case seriously. Um, and so it's so so it's, it's been a, a kind of a real hub for community activism as much as it is for arts and, and culture. Irie actually came about um, because of my training actually at Laban. Um, because of the, the nature of the dance I was doing at school and I was very much into um, the, the kind of creativity I was kind of experiencing at home. So dancing at home to, to reggae music, to calypso, all of that. that. There was a kind of great void there in terms of my formal training and what I was experiencing just naturally. Um, and, and the training at Laban also made it really, it was quite difficult to see, see myself as a, as a performer or somebody who was going to develop a career in dance in that space. Um, so when, when I left Laban, I, I got a job at the Albany um, as a dance animateur. Is that one of those arts council <laughs> made up things back in the day? Um, and, and what I found myself doing, it was great that I had that foundation from Laban, the contemporary dance and the creativity. I mean, don't get me wrong, I loved my, my three mm. years at Laban. Um, but I was able to use the foundation of what I learned there, um, link it to that, that whole kind of cultural heritage and experience, and, um, and kind of framed it as African and Caribbean dance. Um, and I think, and people were really, we let, the classes were really mm. popular and I think people were kind of listening and moving to music that, that, they, that they were listening to at home as well. So it sort of felt like really fun um, and at the time, it was kind of not really at the time, it was sort of quite innovative. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how... That's how that came about. And then with the work that I was doing at the Albany, it just became kind of really frustrating in that they, we would have budgets to create dance. And then at the end of the time, you'd be working with all these people and then it would be over and then you'd have to start again. So they, they felt like there was no kind of real continuity to it. And also I think for me, it just felt like what I was trying to develop in terms of the, the um, dance of the African diaspora or Caribbean dance, well, that kind of really wasn't developing either. And so it, it framed a bit of a frustration. And I had a fantastic um, director, um, the late Jenny Harris, who said, well, go out, go out and figure out what it is you want to do. Um, and I ended up going off to Jamaica, to mm -hmm. the um, Jamaica School of Dance, and that changed everything. I think um, for me, um, choreography has always been a main interest. So when I left um, Lab and I did like a lot of people do, I did a lots of different projects. We did projects together, experimenting. And then I, I guess I got into working with a lot of young people mm -hmm. and, you know, um, developing dance at City in Islington through choreography. Choreography has always been my main thing and understanding you know, different people's backgrounds and what they wanted to do and what they wanted to bring to the table, not necessarily imposing stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, working with Beverly and then um, seeing Irie <laughs> develop, seeing Irie develop and then, you know, like, as Irie got off the ground, then I was at City in Islington, so they would come and do workshops and classes and then residencies and they'd start and perform there. So it became a very organic yeah. thing. And also, um, so I think there's always been a natural assumption that contemporary is the main thing that happens in, in schools, in further education. But, you know, through Beverly's developing work and Irie, we began to um, 
enlarge it at City and Islington so they would get um, contemporary and choreography but then they'd get African mm -hmm. and Caribbean and then they became uh, developing this language of fusion between contemporary and yeah. Caribbean and then we started creating work together for more young people so I think everything's happened quite organically yeah, yeah. you know like developing from contemporary to Caribbean but also I think at the heart of it is trying to um, address the whole issue of equality you know and the number of people that come in to dance and you know what you're presenting them with you know and in terms of culture encouraging people to bring their their culture into the equation mm. i think it's um it's also kind of more of a mindset yeah. i think that we we shared because mm. in essence even though we were working differently we really complemented each other but i think the vision was was very much the same and that mm. platform for for equality and actually um being able to present and work with young people from where from where they're at and and then in kind of encouraging them to kind of to think more broadly about about dance mm. and, and how you create and and um, participate in dance. I think over the years, particularly maybe the last 10, 15 years, so for example, when we, we did a whole uh, load of research starting in around 2004 around dance and diversity and looking actually what other styles were in formal education, FE and higher education and all of that. And it was mainly, as you say, contemporary and ballet with modules in African and Caribbean. Um, and that's still the case. <laughs> But, you know, things like hip-hop have become more important, you know what I mean? So there's more equality in things like hip-hop, and then you've got the um, East London course, University of East London. Um, I think it's slowly, I think people are recognising also, like, commercially with things like Afrobeats and all of that, people are beginning to recognise that it's not all about that one style, would mm. you say? Yeah, no, definitely, and I just think it really has a lot to do with where where dance sits within the hierarchy of education. Mm -hmm. And I think that that black dance, African and Caribbean, was just not visible mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I believe that because nobody was focusing on it, I think that the resources like like books, like mm. researchers, like nobody, that just was not visible. So there was a sense that there was a real lack of importance mm. just in mm. terms of where those forms sat. Um, but I think what has changed over the years, society has changed because politically there have been a lot of issues about culture and diversity and all of those things. And I think it's made... Um, uh, education think more broadly about its agenda and how it's able to um, to be more inclusive and and as Rosie says it's nowhere near where it should be but they have been over the years there have been little pockets that have opened up so for example you know there was a um, in the the early noughties, I think, um, there was a, a Regenerations Conference which looked at um, just the whole international landscape of black dance and what black dancers were doing here in the UK and how they were, how it, um, it linked with what was happening in Africa and the Caribbean and, and, and that changed the landscape a bit for us because it was like oh my god there are other people across the world doing doing similar things but are but are so much better at it because they they had a more inclusive start um so so i think as well that um from a higher education perspective black practitioners who um who really wanted to learn more about the form became got into education yeah. and um and really got into the research of, of um, looking to uh, get themselves accredited, but learning about dance of the African diaspora. So, I mean, up until recently, we, we, had, we didn't even have any doctors of dance no. within the black 
um, community, but we have several now. Um, so I think, you know, lots of, lots of change, people are, voices are being heard. Um, and, I, and God, you just look just at COVID and Black Lives right. Matters and all the rest of it. And these and those platforms are beginning to shift and to open up now. And it feels a bit like we're not the only ones now saying we need change, we need to be more inclusive, we need to see ourselves. But it looks like the, um, those higher education institutions um, and those conservatoires uh, are beginning to look at sort of diversity. It's, it's, not, it's not there because it's very easy to, to say you're doing mm -hmm. it. Um, and, and, and actually, there, it has to be a real serious consideration and focus and, and the real need to make change. Um, because if that isn't there, then it's, it's pointless. But we know it's slow. We know it's not going to happen tomorrow, but we just want to see it. Okay, so the Darts and Diversity um, Research Funding, that was, that was really fun. Because um, first of all, we had, it for, we had it from Nesta for a year. And that was to really research the whole concept of diversity. You know, as we've just said, you know, what was happening in education, in performance, in schools right through. So we had a year, we set up a, um, a pilot scheme for young people for a year where they did African, Caribbean, um, contemporary and ballet and creative stuff on a Saturday. We ran a Saturday programme for a year. We ran a teacher's inset programme for a year. Um, and then we had a conference at the end, so we did all of that for a year. And then the second lot of funding was from the Arts Council, and that's where we did our international travelling to look at best practice. So we looked at best practice in America, uh, Jamaica, um, Cuba, and Ghana. And then we like we compared practice, and we talked to loads of people, and that was the kind of um, stepping stone, the springboard for us to set up the foundation degree, which then developed into our current BA course. Yes, because originally it was a three-year research project, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And essentially we wanted to, we wanted to know what those barriers were. Why, why wasn't um, black dance? And when you look at your, our communities and in urban areas, mm. the percentages of, you know, the black people that were in it, why weren't we um, addressing those sort of issues um, in terms of dance and culture in, in, in the classroom, in the dance classes. Um, but, but it was, but actually the really funny thing about the foundation degree were we were, because it was three years, so year one, year two, and the final year was going to be a big conference, we were going to share all our findings and all the rest of it. And I remember us coming back, I think it was from the, the States, um, and, and getting a, Either Rosie got a call or yeah. you got, yeah, so, like there's this amazing scheme starting up. It's a Foundation partnership degree. between um, uh, a City. creative industry business, higher education and further education. You know, and you guys have just done all of this research of would you write a foundation degree? Um, because, yeah, because we had, you know, we had that. Irie was the creative industry company, um, City and Islington, further education and London Metropolitan University higher education. And so, and so that became that journey, yeah. which meant we were then able to really look at, from the work that we'd done in year one, as um, Rosie originally explained, how we can, you know, how we could start to, to bridge those gaps. Because it wasn't, it couldn't just be left with young people in the car. We had to go, well, what were the, the difficulties for the teachers in the classroom? And you can't, and what was happening with their training? Um, and how, you know, how were they coming into um, inner city to teach um, a, a whole different community when they had not had any experience of that in their training and development? So that was really, that was the most fun yeah. uh, project to do because the findings what was just really, really interesting and that kind of helped us to yeah. kind of move forward. Well, I think one of the things were from, I think when we started as well, we, we kind of felt, you know, it's from the ground up, from the roots up, we were gonna kind of make things happen. But we kind of quickly realized that it actually really wasn't from the ground up, it's from the top 
mm. down. Um, and I think that there were a lot of issues around discourse. It's kind of like, well, you know, who's doing black dance? Who knows about it? Who are you? How are you? You know, what's 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 happening? How do we know there there's a need for this? And in fact, I think one of the we did we did do a lot of interviews with dance institutions, and and there was a point where somebody had actually said to us, well, who would want to do something like that? You know. Yeah. So so there was a real kind of. I, I say fear, mm -hmm. to and be quite assumptions honest. Yes. as well that, you know, if you study, you, ca you can't actually study African and Caribbean dance forms seriously because you're not actually studying technique, you know, and also, you know, even students coming to audition, you say, well, have you done African or Caribbean dance before? And they go, yeah, yeah, well, I just, I just do it yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's part of my just culture, but, you know, yeah. and then it's quite a shock for them when they come because it is real technique and hard work. You know, yeah. so I think that was, it's about assumption and perspectives. Yeah. Well, um, well, it was actually my time in Jamaica. And, um, and when I came back here, so excited and just couldn't wait to share what I'd learned with the, the dance community, with hundreds of dancers like myself, who were kind of having... Um, who was trying to find their way and looking at how they could use their cultural experience to, to shape their work. Um, and, and the first thing I did was set up a festival. It was a festival um, of black dance, which was celebrating black dance and dancers in, in the UK. Um, and I wanted a word that the black community in particular would see and understand immediately that it was for them mm -hmm. and about them. Um, so, 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 Irie was a word that was that's used in the in the Caribbean, particularly with the Rastafarian faith. Um, it means it could be a greeting, but it means essentially for the Rastas to be at one with nature, um, and it could be used to say hello, goodbye. Mm -hmm. um, but also, in essence, it's like it's feeling good. So we went with we went with Irie Dance Theatre because that, yeah. <laughs> and what was interesting, the company toured in the the states um, in the mid '90s, and um, and a, a woman came to the show, and she she said to me, "I I just I don't know what I'm coming to see, but I just saw the name Irie, and I thought it's my people. I need to go and see the show." And, and, and that, for me, just summed it, summed it all up. Mm -hmm. the, the push, that constant push to see African and Caribbean folk forms or traditional forms taken seriously as part of the curriculum, mm -hmm. for me, I think in the, in the same way you have, you know, ballet technique, you know what that is. You have, you know, Graham, you know what that is. Um, mm -hmm. and, but what we have for this diverse form is traditional African dance, Caribbean folk. And th those are the underbelly of, of the style, of the form. And so I don't think I'd compromise on shifting that at all. Absolutely. Yeah, the mission remains the same, yeah. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a hope for the future in that, you know, we're really proud of the fact that we are a first and we're unique and everything, but in essence, it would be really great if diversity became more intrinsic to what everybody does, so it doesn't become unusual mm -hmm. to have diverse yeah. forms within conservatoires. Can you imagine that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And also to be recognised as I read that, you know, the training is technical and it's creative and it's everything that you would want from a professional training. I think some people, you know, it's difficult for people to understand that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think the forms have to go further. That's yeah. my hope for the future. I think that we, in order to achieve what we've been able to, because we're a small company, um, we, it would have been impossible to, to be kind of setting up and running the BA as well as a touring dance theatre company. So we actually had to 
to let something lay for a while while we mm. kind of focus on that. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's taken much longer than we'd intended. Um, but I do think that uh, not having a performance company, not having something that people that are graduating from the course is able to kind of see uh, themselves as a, a part of, um, that's, that's something we are really going to be focusing on for, for the future because I think that's going to have to be the thing that, that will be front, front facing mm. that's, you know mm -hmm. it's going to get say, it out I'm there absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah I can look at these and a part of me feels really sad because I know now um, students probably don't want to hang out in a book for too long <laughs> rather than see what's on, on the web but well <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And that's kind of part of the process for us, isn't it? It's kind of so encouraging them. Yeah. 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 Because that's exactly you. Now, now you find like, oh, we've got this literature here. Yeah. Now is exactly the time when the human brain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.